Two people are still on the loose this morning after police say they robbed a Tyler gas station at gunpoint. Coming up, uh, look at what happened. Plus, TxDOT is hoping a new app for drivers will help improve air quality. How it works, coming up. And new recommendations on reducing the expense of cancer treatments. That's in this morning's Health Alert. Bringing you coverage you can count on. This is CBS 19 News This Morning. Well, good morning. It is Monday, March 16th. I'm Clint Yates. Thank you for joining us this morning. Dana Huey has the morning off. Well, you may want to take it a little slow this morning as you head out. You could run into a little fog this morning. Let's check in with Scott Fossey as we get ready for our Monday morning. Good morning, Scott. Good morning, Clint. You uh, saw a little bit of that orb in the sky <laughs> yesterday, you know, yeah. across parts of uh -huh. East Texas. We're hoping for that again today, but we have to deal with, as you said, quite a bit of fog across the region at this hour this morning. Live Doppler radar showing absolutely no rainfall out there anywhere close, but some mid and high level clouds working in from the north and west. And in the lower levels of the atmosphere, fog is forming across East Texas, dense in some parts of the area. As we take a look at your forecast, here's what you can anticipate. This dense fog advisory generally extends along and east of a line from Mount Vernon south to about Quitman, Mineola, Tyler, Jacksonville, all the way down to Lufkin, and then east of there across the Texas-Louisiana line. Shreveport, Bossier included under this dense fog advisory until 10 a.m. So low beam headlights and as Clint said, plan on a little bit extra drive time. If you've got a morning commute of any significance, it will take you a little longer this morning. Upper 60s by noon today. Check this out. Sunshine around the region. Once we lose the fog in the early morning clouds with a high of 75 degrees. That should make for a pretty nice Monday. Clint, back to you. All right, looks good. Thanks, Scott. Check with you in a few minutes. Happening now, Tyler police are still looking for two people they say are responsible for robbing a Valero gas station at gunpoint. It happened at the Valero on the west-southwest loop just after 11 o'clock on Saturday night. You can see in this surveillance video a black male and a white or Hispanic female came into the store as the clerk was preparing for clothes. The man held the clerk at gunpoint while the woman grabbed the cash. Just money and coins. We had a, we have change in a box of, you know, to have for the weekend. And it was about $200 in coins. Police say no one was hurt. The female suspect was about five foot four and 150 pounds. She was wearing a hooded black jacket with black pants and a black bandana. The male suspect was five seven and 140 pounds and was wearing a black hooded jacket with black pants and a white bandana. New this morning, Los Angeles police are looking for a gunman who shot two police officers. A sergeant for the police department says the officer suffered minor injuries after someone opened fire Sunday night. The officers, officers were reportedly in plain clothes at the time of the shooting and returned fire. Police set up barriers several blocks around the intersection to search for the gunman. Robert Durst, the infamous murder suspect whose saga inspired the HBO series The Jinx, has been arrested in New Orleans. He was taken into custody at a New Orleans hotel over the weekend. He was for this was for the murder of Susan Berman 15 years ago. She was killed as detectives were getting ready to question her in the 1982 disappearance of Durst's wife Kathy. Durst has never been charged in connection with Berman's murder. He was acquitted in the 2001 dismemberment death of his Galveston neighbor because he said the killing was in self-defense. He's being held without bond. Boston's St. Patrick's Day Parade makes history. Two gay and lesbian groups marched after decades of opposition that went all the way to the U.S. Supreme Court. Gay military veterans group out vets and gay rights group Pride uh, Boston Pride joined Sunday's parade at the invitation of the sponsoring South Boston Allied War Veterans Council 20 years ago. Parade organizers won a U.S. Supreme Court decision upholding their right to invite or exclude marchers. This year, the council finally said yes to gays and lesbians. Today, we move forward in Boston. Today, we set a standard, a new standard of inclusiveness and equality, and it's just amazing. Boston Mayor Marty Walsh, Governor Charlie Baker, and other Massachusetts political leaders also took part. Boston's mayors had boycotted the event since 1995 when the council took its fight to exclude gay groups to the U.S. Supreme Court. As the U.S. considers legislation to restrict the use of drone technology, one company in Chile is hoping to put it to its use to savings lives.
Drones fitted with a float, camera, microphone, and speaker are being tested on the beaches to help lifeguards rescue distressed swimmers. The drones are controlled from the beach and sent to the victim while the lifeguards swim to their aid. Green Solution, the company developing the drones, hopes to put them to work on beaches by next summer. New this morning, according to TxDOT, places in East Texas are close to failing federal air quality standards. Now they've developed a new app they hope will help fix that. CBS 19's Andrea Martinez joins us now. Andrea, this app helps drivers keep up with their car maintenance, but how will it improve our air quality? Well, Clint, TxDOT says emissions from cars and trucks make up half of all the air pollution in Texas. But this new app will try to improve that by alerting you when you need to make small changes to your vehicle. Checking your air filter and keeping your tires properly inflated are just a few things us drivers can do that also help keep the air clean. And it also saves you money in the long run, too. All of this is especially important during these warmer winter, winter, sorry, warmer months. Ozone forms when chemicals from the cars mix with the heat and sunlight. That combination is bad news for our air quality. Clint. All right. Thanks, Andrea. That app is already up and running. You can access it by going to CBS19.tv. We've set up a link where you can ac access the Road Sense website. A drive to visit family turns into a roadside baby delivery that's coming up. We'll hear from the mom about her SUV delivery. Plus, one city is making history with their seasonal snowfall record. Taking a look outside this morning, no snow but a little fog across East Texas this morning. Temperatures not bad to start our week. 51 degrees out to start our Monday. Big question. Will we see the sunshine today? Scott Fossey has the answer. It's next right here on CBS 19 This Morning. Experienced. Jillian Sheridan. CBS 19 News at 5, 6, and 10. From your local news leader, here's your CBS 19 Weather Authority forecast with meteorologist Scott Fossey. 5.40 now on a Monday morning. Good morning, East Texas. Hope you enjoyed your weekend. We did see a bit of sunshine around the region. If you look closely and uh, uh, fairly fast across East Texas, uh, we will see more sunshine around the area today, finally. You wouldn't know it, though, looking outdoors this morning. We've got a blanket of clouds extending from North Texas uh, across the East Texas region into sections of Louisiana, Southern Arkansas, mid and high-level co cloud cover mainly. But at the surface, what you're going to be dealing with this morning, many of you, widespread fog, and some of it's fairly thick or dense out there. There. Dense fog advisory is officially in effect from Mount Vernon down through Quitman, Mineola to Tyler to Jacksonville to all the way south into sections of Angelina County near Lufkin and east of there. You see it even encompasses Shreveport, Bossier. So if you're headed east or anywhere for the most part across East Texas this morning until about 10 a.m., expect to run into some fairly dense or thick fog. If you've got a fairly significant morning commute, you'll want to allow yourself plenty of extra drive time. 69 by noon. By then, we should be under partly to variably cloudy skies. Ample sunshine around the region this afternoon with a high of 75 degrees. That's running well above normal for this time of the year. So we walk you through the forecast now over the next 24 hours. Again, the clouds, the fog, they start to break up by late morning. They'll burn off. We'll still see some lingering cloud cover across deep east Texas as we go into the afternoon hours, but generally speaking, partly to variably cloudy skies through this evening. Then we'll watch our next storm system advancing along with the cloud cover from the desert southwest. It sits near the Baja Peninsula of California this morning. It'll move in our general direction today, tonight, tomorrow, and in fact, I think by tomorrow evening, a 20% chance for rain. 78, though, your high tomorrow ahead of that system. Then the clouds, the rain, and a few scattered strong thunderstorms roll into East Texas on Wednesday. Look for highs then in the upper 60s. Should clear out, it looks like, by early Thursday morning. Then gradually, we'll see clouds increasing by Thursday night again as storm system number two approaches from the west and brings us a good shot at rain on Friday. Right now, we'll call for a 60% chance Friday. Looks like some of the heavier rains will be along and south of I-20, and especially across deep east Texas Friday through about half the day on Saturday. Then we clear out Saturday afternoon, and this upcoming weekend looking pretty nice. mid 60s Saturday up to 70 under sunny skies by the end of the weekend. That's your 7-Day Planner. You can check it out on our website, cbs19.tv.
<laughs> so enjoy the sun while we can today. You know, do. Today, mm. part of the day, tomorrow we'll see it, and then the rain is back late tomorrow night. Definitely plan on a pretty soggy and potentially some, some thunderstorm activity around mm. East Texas, middle part of the week. All right. Okay. Thanks, Scott. You bet. Well, Boston makes history by having the snowiest and probably the most miserable season since 1872. The official measurement of 108.6 inches at Logan International Airport last night topped a season record of 107.9 inches set in 1995 to 1996. Forecasters note that snow can still mount up this year. Boston's mayor tweeted, Super Bowls, World Series, Stanley Cups, and snowfall records. We are truly a titled city. Millions of Americans deal with car accidents each year, but would you know what to do if one happened to you? Coming up on our next hour, the next hour, the do's and don'ts after a car crash. And next, the impact pedestrians can, or pediatricians can have on people who smoke. You're watching CBS 19 this morning, coverage you can count on. Live from your local news leader, with everything you need to know before you go, you're watching CBS 19 this morning. 546 now, if you're just waking up and joining us, here are a few of the stories we're following this morning. Tyler police are still looking for two people they say are responsible for robbing a Valero gas station at gunpoint. It happened just after 11 o'clock on Saturday night. Infamous real estate heir Robert Durst is expected to appear in a New Orleans court this morning to address his extradition to Los Angeles, where he faces a first-degree murder charge. The 71-year-old has long been linked to two murders and to the 1982 decision appearance of his wife. The Cherokee County Sheriff's Department is looking for 44-year-old Jose Sandoval for allegedly shooting another man in Jacksonville. It happened just before 6 Saturday afternoon in Cherokee County. A health alert this morning. Pediatricians can play an important role when it comes to young people and smoking. That's according to researchers in New England. They found early intervention can help kids quit or avoid the habit altogether. Nearly 4 million young Americans smoke, with about 80% of them continuing on into adulthood. Some top oncologists in the U.S. say it's time to do something about the high cost of cancer drugs. In recent years, prices for cancer treatments have jumped from about 10000 to $100,000 a year. An article in a Mayo Clinic journal recommends lifting restrictions on imported drugs and having Medicare negotiate drug prices. And a new study on people with high blood pressure suggests folic acid supplements can significantly reduce the risk of first stroke. Researchers in China track more than 20,000 adults with hypertension who took folic acid together with hypertension medication. New this morning, a trip to visit family turns into some scary but happy moments. Late Friday night, Carmen Urias, her husband and three-year-old daughter, were driving on an interstate highway. That's when Carmen went into labor. She wasn't due for a couple of weeks, and they had not anticipated that she would go into labor in the midst of the family outing. Well, Carmen's husband parked the SUV on the side of the freeway, called 911. About 15 minutes later, firefighters arrived. The baby was born in the back seat of the family's SUV. You hear about it, you never think it's gonna happen to you. As a mom, that's not your scenario for your baby. Like all this wind and cold, it all Well, the good news, mom and baby are said to be doing okay. Texas ranks in the top 10 in adding clean energy jobs in the U.S. Plus, which company is reportedly bidding on some of the Radio Shack leases? Those stories are ahead in this morning's Texas Business Report. And as you get ready to step outdoors and kick off another work week today on this Monday, kiddos go back to school today as well after spring break week last week. Some patchy areas of dense fog forming across East Texas, so be mindful of that. Watch the roadways, allow yourself plenty of extra drive time for your morning commute. We'll look at mostly cloudy skies mixed in with the fog this morning, then some sunshine. Remember what that is? Around the region, late morning and throughout the afternoon. We'll outline today's forecast coming up on the other side of the break. It's 549. We'll be back right after this. Experienced. Mike Landis. CBS 19 News at 5, 6, and 10. Here's your CBS 19 Weather Authority forecast with meteorologist Scott Fossey. 
Eight minutes now, 5.52 before the hour of 6 o'clock on a Monday morning. Hope you enjoyed your weekend. As we get this Monday kicked off, we're still looking at cloud cover. That's no surprise, right? In the mid and upper levels of the atmosphere and in the lower levels of the atmosphere, some fog <laughs> forming in a fairly a th a thick fashion, if you will, fairly dense across a large swath of East Texas this morning. So the National Weather Service office out of Shreveport issuing a dense fog advisory until 10 a.m. Generally, it runs from Mount Vernon up along I-30. If you drew a line south of there, down through Wood County, Mineola, the Quitman vicinity, down across Smith County, including Tyler, several other cities, obviously, Cherokee County, Jacksonville, the Rusk vicinity, all the way south into Angelina County and Lufkin. And then went east of that line, all the way over to the Texas-Louisiana line, and in fact, into shreveport Bossier. All of those counties and cities within that area, under that dense fog advisory until 10 this morning. So, allow yourself plenty of extra drive time. 61 at 10 a.m., 69 by noon today, and look at this. We're going to see some sunshine after the fog burns off late this morning. Look for highs this afternoon to reach 75 degrees. That's much warmer than is typical or normal for this time of the year by about 7 or 8 degrees. So that's a Monday present, I guess you could say, from Mother Nature. Coming up, we'll be talking about our next best chance for wet weather. Yes, we've got another storm system that's evolved over the weekend, sitting out over Southern California, and it's headed our way. Coming up, we'll let you know when it arrives. All that and more straight ahead. Clint. All right, thanks, Scott. The BP CEO talks about the future of oil prices and United Airlines flirts with a fast, casual concept for its airport lounges. Jane King is at the NASDAQ this morning with those stories and more in today's Texas Business Report. Hello, Texas. The dramatic drop in oil and gas prices and the transfer of wealth to consumers is going to be, quote, very painful. Those words come from BP CEO. He told CNBC the industry has been living in a world of luxury over the last few years when prices were above $100 a barrel. Well, Texas is number six in adding clean energy jobs in the U.S. The rankings compiled by TheStreet.com says Texas added almost 1,800 of those jobs last year. Most were in solar, wind, and smart grids. Well, GameStop is reportedly bidding on some of Radio Shack's leases. Reuters reports that the two Texas companies are talking about 163 leases that would total $2.4 million. Radio Shack filed for bankruptcy earlier this year. And United will test a fast, casual restaurant concept at its lounge in Houston. The lounges, which will be in just a handful of airports at first, will have healthier food, and the United Gates at some airports are getting an upgrade as well. From the NASDAQ market site in Times Square, I'm Jane King with your Texas Business Report. All right, time for our water cooler question this morning. This week, we're talking about horses. How many gallons of water can a horse drink a day? like to know what you think. People are talking about it on Facebook this morning. So far, the popular answer has been 20. Hmm. like to know what you think. We'll give you the right answer coming up at about 645. And hey, participating in today's water cooler question will put your name in the hat to win four tickets to the Gala of Royal Horses. That's coming up Friday night at the Old Palace in Tyler. So take a guess. We'll put your name in the hat. Coming up at our six o'clock hour, a church in Gregg County is celebrating a long history. We hear from a proud church member who says her family has been there from the beginning. Plus, Secretary of State John Kerry meets with his Iranian counterpart in Switzerland today. Latest round of talks on Iran's nuclear program. It's all straight ahead here on CBS 19 this morning. A new look's coming to CBS 19. New logo. New bigger, bolder graphics. It's your news, your weather, your sports. Now organized by color. See the difference on CBS 19 News. The CBS 19 Cafe Coffee Mug is brought to you by Choice Home Care. Nuclear negotiations with Iran resume as a critical deadline fast approaches. Plus, a new app is out this morning to alert Texas drivers about vehicle maintenance and how to prevent air pollution. And a popular soft drink company is releasing a new drink. Bringing you coverage you can count on. This is CBS 19 News This Morning. Well, good morning. It is Monday, March 16th. I'm Clint Gates. Thank you so much for joining us for CBS 19 this morning. Dana Huey has the morning off. Well, we're starting off this morning with a little fog out there. Mm -hmm. Maybe more than just a little in places. Scott Fossey's with us. May need a little extra time for your commute this Absolutely. morning. Absolutely. Took me a while to get in this morning. You know, you're more than likely across parts of the area. Gregg County, also the Rust County vicinity, eastern sections of Smith County, the area I drove through early this morning. Really, really seeing a 
lot of fog out there. I had to slow down at oh, times look to at 40 that. to 45 miles per hour. This illustrates perfectly what's going yeah. on. Normally, you can see most of the north side of the Loop 281 at this hour in Longview with the streetlights uh, lighting it up. The streetlights are on mm. this morning, as you can see, but visibility is down to less than a quarter of a mile. So do be careful. An example of what you're going to be dealing with through at least 9, 10 o'clock this morning. Live Doppler radar showing on top of the fog deck some mid and high level clouds still streaming across East Texas. The good news is I think we're going to see a lot of this burn off in the way of the cloud cover and also the fog by mid to late morning. A dense fog advisory in effect until 10 a.m. from Mount Vernon south to Mineola to Tyler to Jacksonville to Lufkin and east of there. That's through 10 a.m. So expect that temperature wise. Really nice day today. 69, decreasing clouds around noon, partly to variably cloudy this afternoon, a high of about 75. We'll be back down to 73 by around 5 p.m. <laughs> so that should put maybe a bit of a spring in your step. <laughs> yeah. uh, over the weekend, we saw a little bit of sunshine across yeah. the region. We hope to see more today. Yeah, let's hope so. Absolutely. All right. Thanks, Scott. You bet. Secretary of State John Kerry continues negotiations in Switzerland with Iranian officials over the country's nuclear program. As Susan McGinnis reports, the meetings come after 47 Republicans sent a letter to Iranian leaders warning them against securing a possible deal with President Obama. With a critical deadline for a framework agreement just two weeks away, Secretary of State John Kerry is back at the negotiating table with his Iranian counterpart to hammer out a deal to restrict and monitor Iran's nuclear program for at least 10 years. In return, the U.S. would ease some of the crippling sanctions imposed on the country. If it's peaceful, let's get it done. And my hope is that in the next days that will be possible. It's the first time the two men are meeting since 47 Republicans sent a controversial letter to Iran's leaders last week, warning that a deal might not last beyond President Obama's term in office. This letter was absolutely calculated directly to interfere with these negotiations. Freshman Senator Tom Cotton, who authored the letter, defended the move and threatened to ratchet up sanctions if no deal is reached. If they bluff this week, call their bluff. The Congress stands ready to impose much more severe sanctions. The White House has urged lawmakers not to interfere in negotiations after two senators introduced legislation suggesting Congress review any deal struck with Iran before it's implemented. Administration officials say any action the president makes on Iran would be an executive agreement, meaning Congress does not have the right to make any changes to it. Susan McGinnis, CBS News, Washington. The U.S. and five nations have set an end of March deadline to agree on the framework. One man is on the run after allegedly shooting another man in Jacksonville. Cherokee County Sheriff's Department says it happened just before 6 Saturday afternoon on County Road 3306 in Cherokee County. Deputies are looking for 44-year-old Jose Sandoval. They say he fled the scene with a woman and two teenage boys. He was last seen driving a red 1996 Dodge pickup truck with these Texas license plates number CXH4507. The victim was taken to a Tyler hospital for surgery but was alert and speaking to a deputy there on the scene. Another follow-up now. Another man involved in the PT Cole Park murder case is set to enter a plea this morning. Smith County District Attorney's Office confirms Raheem Goldstein will plead guilty to murder for his part in the 2013 shooting death of Brianna Young. Goldstein's guilty plea is in exchange for a 20-year prison sentence. A man, a police in Ferguson, Missouri, say open fire shooting two officers in a protest last Thursday is now in custody. Police say Jeffrey Williams told them he was shooting at someone else. He's 20 years old. Williams says he had an argument with that person and did not intend to hit the officers. One officer was shot in the cheek, the other in the shoulder. Both were taken to the hospital but were released the same day. Williams is being held on a $300,000 bond. Ferguson business owners are pleading for peace, saying they're worried they might have to shut down if the unrest continues. The owner of Celebrity Soul Food hosted a news conference over the weekend, saying sales at his restaurant are down by 80% since August. Business owners say protesters are a major reason why, as arrests in front of the police department have now become a common occurrence. I don't know how long, much longer the business can uh, survive, to be honest. I'm definitely worried about it. I'm worried about all the businesses down here. People say they are not calling for an end to the protest, just for a change in how protesters are sending their message. 
Three days after Cyclone Pam swept through Vanuatu, the true horror of its destruction is only now becoming clear. Aid workers are starting to arrive and say it's the worst storm the country's seen in living memory. Authorities have declared a state of emergency after the monster cyclone tore through the island nation. At least eight people have been confirmed dead, but the actual count right now is almost impossible to predict. Almost the entire country is in a communications blackout, no phone or internet service. As spring and warmer weather approach and people head to vacation spots, you can expect more traffic on the roads. Now TxDOT is making it easier for you to navigate the roads with a new app. It's called Road Sense. CBS 19's Andrea Martinez has actually been using the app herself. Andrea Road Sense helps you save money. It does, yeah, I have been using it. And just by entering some information about your car, it'll tell you on average how much you'll spend annually and how you can reduce that cost. Now that's nice, but the app's main goal is to make Texas cleaner. According to TxDOT, emissions from cars and trucks make up half of the pollution in the air. RoadSense will help change that. It'll w raise awareness about the impact of vehicles on air quality and motivate drivers to help keep the air clean. Uh, the program gives you certain tips, like uh, you know, you don't make real fast starts and stops uh, that'll help you uh, get better gas mileage uh, and also reduce the emissions out of your tailpipe. It's all part of the Texas Clean Campaign. They hope to improve air quality, especially during the hot summer months when ozone levels spike. And according to TxDOT, the Tyler Longview area is close to failing federal air quality standards, and cities like Houston, Dallas, and San Antonio already fail those standards. Well, Andrea, how can we tell if our cars are polluting? Well, you know, Clint, I talked to mechanics in the area, and here's what they told me. They told me if you've ever seen smoke coming out of a car's tailpipe, it's probably a good sign that the car is releasing emissions into the air. And if it does that for more than 10 seconds, you can actually report that vehicle on that Texas Drive Clean website. And we'll hear more from car experts about how to save money. That's at 630. All right, sounds good. Thanks, Andrea. Well, according to TxDOT, areas in East Texas are close to failing federal air quality standards. For more information on the Texas Drive Clean Campaign and Road Sense, visit CBS19.tv and click on the hot button. Have you ever been in a car accident? In the U.S., there are nearly 4 million of them every year. Most are fender benders, and if you've been in one, you know how easy it is to forget important information while you're at the scene. In today's Angie's List report, CBS 19's Nina Harrelson explains what to do and what not to do after the crash. Cars crash every day. If injuries are involved, emergency responders are the first to be called. But what if it's just a minor mishap that's more inconvenient than life-threatening? First, stay calm. Then, take notes. Most of us carry a camera around on our phone, so it's a great way for you to document what happened. Take pictures of your car, take pictures of the scene, because you can have those to share with your insurance company or the police for that matter. Your photos should help tell the story of what happened. They can also expedite an insurance claim. The best things that can be shown in a photo that you can get at the time of the accident is something that will show us uh, several things. The points of impact on the car, uh, the any road markers that there may be, such as a, a, a turn, turn lane, traffic lights, uh, getting the license, getting a snapshot of the, the license plate of the other party, uh, and very importantly, getting a snapshot of their uh, insurance identification card. In some wrecks, like a rear end collision, it seems easy to assign blame, but don't be pressured into accepting responsibility until all the facts are gathered. You don't ever want to admit fault because in many cases there's other factors that have happened in an accident that you're not aware of. Somebody maybe is that you don't realize that it's a no turn on red and they've turned, uh, which can cause uh, at, at worst contributory uh, liability. Don't sign anything in an accident scene unless it's something the police are asking you to sign. What you want to do in that scenario is you just want to be exchanging your information with the other driver. Exchange your contact information and your insurance information, but leave the rest of the documentation to the police. Nina Harrelson, CBS 19. And Angie says to expect, expect an increase in your insurance premium if you have more than two significant claims in a short period of time. The decision to file a claim is simple. If your damage costs less than your deductible, pay for the repair yourself. The oldest African-American church in Gregg County celebrates a major milestone. Members of St. Mark's 
Christian Methodist Episcopal Church celebrated 148 years of history Sunday. Several local leaders also joined in on the service. One church member tells us she and her family have been proud members from the very beginning. I am the eighth generation within this church. My great, 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 great grandmother was the first janitor of this church. The church first began in 1867 by gathering in a brush arbor. The history doesn't stop. Just at the church doors, four schools in the Longview area were named after the original members of this congregation. A groundbreaking for a new East Texas police substation takes place today. We'll have more details on that coming up. Plus a celebrity beat down at a Comedy Central roast. Who is the center of the criticizing coming up in this morning's entertainment news. Let's take a peek outside. Look at this. If you can't see anything, we're trying to look over the loop in Longview this morning. Look at the fog. Hard to see anything out there this morning, so do be careful. How long will it last? Scott Fossey has more on that and the rest of our Monday. It's coming up next right here on CBS 19 This Morning. From your local news leader, here's your CBS 19 Weather Authority forecast with meteorologist Scott Fossey. Quarter after the hour of 6 o'clock on a Monday morning. Good morning, East Texas. Live Doppler radar with satellite overlaid on top of it, showing significant areas of cloud cover across East Texas. Also, a lot of dense fog out there this morning as well. Let's go to the maps, and I'll show you where that dense fog advisory is. It's located from Mount Vernon down through Mineola to Tyler to Jacksonville, all the way to Lufkin and Angelina County, and east of there, encompassing the Texas-Louisiana line, and our parish is there in northwestern Louisiana, including shreveport Bossier. So you'll be hard-pressed to drive anywhere where you don't see the fog this morning. Visibilities are dropping down to less than a quarter of a mile over sections of Gregg County, also southern Upshur County, eastern Smith County, northern Russ County. So do be careful as you get ready to step outdoors on this Monday morning. As we take a look at your day part planner, temperatures really not too bad through noon today in the upper 60s by lunchtime. I think by late morning, once we uh, lose the early morning cloud cover and burn off the fog, we're in for partly to variably cloudy skies. Should see ample sunshine around the region today and warmer than normal temperatures too. Look for a high today of 75 degrees. We'll drop back down to about 73 by the time you head home this evening. Fairly active weather pattern across the Pacific Northwest, the Northern High Plains as well. We're watching another storm system evolving over the weekend near the Baja Peninsula. It will slowly start to lift out in our general direction. So by late in the day tomorrow and definitely tomorrow night, Wednesday, we're looking at more rain across the region. You can see any confined sprinkles this morning or any isolated showers are confined to the southern third of the Lone Star State at this hour. This early morning Gulf of Mexico moisture will continue to ease its way up into East Texas ahead of our next storm system. Again, it approaches during the day on Wednesday. As far as temperatures across the country, really not too bad. They're warming, looking more spring-like for morning lows. 51 this morning in the Twin Cities area, mid-50s in Des Moines, Chicago's even in the upper 40s. Buffalo's still freezing at 32, 49 in Atlanta, 52 in Jackson, and we're looking at temperatures here across the East Texas region in the 50s. So is Dallas, 51. In the mid-40s, up in the Panhandle area this morning. It's currently 49 in Gilmer, 48 in Mineola. Everybody else on this map, with the exception of a couple of more southern-tier counties, Palestine and Nacogdoches in the upper 40s. Mid-40s in Nacogdoches, everybody else in the low to mid-50s around the region. It'll feel pretty nice as the kiddos return to school today as far as the weather's concerned. Do keep your eye on the side of the road for those standing and waiting for the school bus this morning. That fog, especially dense, it's going to be hard for you to see, so certainly allow yourself some extra drive time as you get ready to head in. As we walk you through the overnight hours tonight, clouds in advance of that west coast system will gradually start to spread across our east Texas skies. We'll see some sunshine tomorrow morning, then gradually during the day we cloud over. There is a slight chance for rain by late in the day tomorrow, much better chance overnight Tuesday night and during the day Wednesday as the big upper level low wobbles slowly across the Lone Star State.
28. 68 for your high Wednesday. You're going to need your umbrella by the middle part of the week. I think we'll see the storms roll out of the area early on Thursday morning. A bit of a break Thursday afternoon before our next system then moves in on Friday. Probably pretty close to midday on Friday. A 60% chance for rain through early on Saturday morning. All in all, temperatures not too bad. And at least you'll see some sunshine around the region later today. That's your seven-day planner. You can check it out on our website, cbs19.tv. Clint? All right, thanks, Scott. Entertainment News. Pop star Justin Bieber got quite the celebrity beatdown at his Comedy Central roast over the weekend. Snoop Dogg, Ludacris, Shaquille O'Neal, and Martha Stewart were just a few of the celebs on hand for the event. Comedian Kevin Hart hosted and told reporters before the show nothing was off limits. How hard am I going to go in? You know what? Not so hard to where it hurts it's where he cries, but hard enough to where I set the tone and basically make people understand that it's going to be a night of digs. It's going to be a night. We always talk about our homeboy. That's what we do in the hood. That's, you know, it's, it's just a fun thing to be able to crack at each other. You know what I'm saying? That's what keeps our, t our skin the cutdowns covered Bieber's many run-ins with the law, his pop music and bratty behavior. And in January, Bieber apologized for his bad behavior in a video posted to Facebook. The roast of Justin Bieber airs March 30th on Comedy Central. Rihanna's voice is coming to a theater near you. She plans, or what well, she plans to play the new friend of a lovable alien takes on in an unexpected adventure in the new movie Home. Jim Parsons is the voice of the lovable alien. Home opens on March the 27th. The shoe fits, so Cinderella must be a hit. The Disney live action take on the classic fairy tale came out on top of the box office over the weekend. The newcomer took in $70.1 million in its debut weekend. Liam Neeson's run all night came in second with $11 million. And Kingsman, the Secret Service, came came in third with $6.2 million. Health leaders may have found where the listeria outbreak began after most multiple cases are linked to Bluebell ice cream products. That's coming up. Plus what Microsoft is working on that would compete directly with Apple. That's coming up in this morning's business news. Right now, we're going back to the water cooler question for the day. How many gallons of water can a horse drink in a day? Got lots of folks talking about it on Facebook this morning. Love to hear from you, too. Take a guess on Facebook or Twitter. We'll have the answer at 645. Hey, don't forget, just by participating in today's water cooler question, we will put your name in the hat to win four tickets to the Gala of Royal Horses coming up Friday night at the Old Palace in Tyler. Get your news when you want it. Visit CBS19.tv. From your local news leader, with everything you need to know before you go, you're watching CBS 19 this morning. 624 now, if you're just waking up and joining us, here are a few of the stories we are following this morning. Secretary of State John Kerry meets with his Iranian counterpart in Switzerland today. That's the latest round of talks on Iran's nuclear program. World leaders have set the end of March deadline to agree on a framework for the final deal in June. 44-year-old Jose Sandoval is on the run this morning after allegedly shooting another man in Jacksonville. Cherokee County Sheriff's Department says it happened just before 6 Saturday afternoon. A Dallas Republican lawmaker has proposed a bill that would make it a misdemeanor for a citizen to photograph or record a Texas officer within 25 feet while they are working a scene. They believe the measure would be unconstitutional. Business News Now, Microsoft is working on an advanced version of its personal assistant, Cortana. According to Reuters, this is a competitor to Apple's Siri. Microsoft is reportedly using research from an artificial intelligence project called Einstein. They'll put the new version on the desktop with Windows 10 this fall in a standalone app coming up after that. Gas prices are going back down. AAA says they fell for eight consecutive days and now average $2.43 a gallon nationwide. In Texas, it's about $2.32 a gallon. Here in East Texas, we've seen prices as low as $2.14. The price of crude oil plunged last week, and AAA says that means prices at the pump could keep going down over the next few weeks. Mountain Dew is coming out with a new drink later this month. It's called Dewshine. 
It will sell for about a buck fifty each. It's clear citrus dew made with real sugar. Some critics think the long neck bottles look a lot like craft beer. The company says the packaging is consistent with other premium soft drink brands. From your local news leader, it's time for Big Board Sports with Eric Sullivan. All right, good morning, everybody. Yesterday at 5 o'clock, the brackets were released for the NCAA tournament. Duke, Kentucky, Wisconsin, and Villanova all get number one seeds. Texas did get in. They will play Butler in the opening round on Thursday. Also, SMU gets a number six seed. They'll play UCLA. Iowa State, Baylor, Oklahoma all get a three seed. Kansas is a number two. Oklahoma State a nine. And West Virginia a five seed. But this is the big news. Our team from right down the road in Nacogdoches, SFA, is going down dancing once again. They won the Southland Conference Tournament. Third time they've been to the uh, uh, NCAA Tournament. Of course, last year they stunned the world by beating VCU in the opening round. Our Jeff Schaefer was at the watch party and has more from that. On everybody's schedule, our, our name was circled. Um, and so, I mean, we were taking everybody's best shot. And in turn, I believe that that's made us a better basketball team and it'll prepare us for this moment. They had the bullseye on their back all year. Uh, they took a lot of shots from uh, in, in terms of everybody best shot. There's nothing better than setting on Selection Sunday knowing you're in. Can you describe the feeling to me when you see Stephen F. Austin up on the big screen today? Uh, can't even. Where's can't even explain? Just, <laughs> just excited, ready to go make some noise. It's. I'm still like a kid in a candy store. I'm elated. I couldn't be happier, and I'm. I'm excited for these players. The tourney is something that you can't. You you don't know what it's like until you've been there. Mm -hmm. And so last year we didn't have that experience, and and so this year we know what to expect. We'll kind of have somewhat of a routine this year, um, and but I mean for the new guys it'll it'll be quite the quite the experience. What do you know about Utah? They're a big time defensive team. Um, I mean, just, I mean, we're the, we're the same. That's what we base our program around. I've seen them very, very little being on the West Coast. I, uh, my older age, I have to go to bed earlier. I don't stay up and see a lot of their games, but uh, I know they're extremely well coached. I know they're one of the better defensive teams in the country. And I know they've got a big man that's, uh, that's a problem inside, and, and I know they've got very good guards. So, you know, we're going to have our hands full. We're going to have to play well, but uh, we're, we're very excited about uh, the opportunity. Go get them, coach! We have bigger dreams. We're trying to do do bigger than just go win one game. You know, as I said on the Sweet 16, you know, from then anything can happen. All right, thank you, Jeff Schaefer. Good luck to the Jacks. Here it is. They will play on Thursday against Utah on True TV at 627. SFA plays Thursday on True TV at 627. The play-in games start on Tuesday and Wednesday, then Thursday through Friday, round one. Saturday and Sunday, round number two. And real quickly, Big time luck out to the TJC men and women. The guys play at 10 a.m. this morning in the national tournament for junior college guys. First time since 96. The ladies play tonight at 8.30. We hope to be reporting two victories tonight at 10 o'clock. Everybody fill out your brackets. Enjoy it. It's a pretty good time of the year for sports. So let's send it back to the morning show crew. All right, thanks, Eric. Coming up, a look at some of the top destinations for summer vacations. And next, how an app will alert people about vehicle maintenance and hopefully prevent air pollution at the same time. Let's take a look at some local upcoming events now. March 18th, the Brittany Crow Junior Piano Recital will be held at the UT Tyler campus. That starts at 7.30 in the evening. And March 19th, the Lone Star Singles Dinner Out will be at Portofino's in Tyler. It starts at 5.45. For more information on these and other upcoming events, just visit our website, cbs19.tv. Head to the Go Spot tab. You'll find it right there at the top of the page. Live from your local news leader with everything you need to know before you go. You're watching CBS 19 this morning. All right, 632 now, Monday morning. Hope you had a great weekend. As you get uh, ready to head out back to work this morning, may want to give yourself some extra time. Mm -hmm. That fog is thick out there. You know morning. it is. It uh, slowed me down by about mm -hmm. probably 10, 15 minutes this morning on the yeah. drive in. So do be careful. Allow yourself plenty of extra drive time this morning. The fog, while not too bad in some areas, is extremely hard to see in others as far as visibilities are concerned. Here's one example. Mm -hmm. This is Loop 281 in Longview. Boy. 
Normally we can see all the way down the loop. At this mm -hmm. hour in the morning, you can see the street lights and they're illuminating the fog. Uh, visibility there between a quarter and a half a mile. Some other parts of East Texas, a quarter mile or less, so do be careful. Kiddos, your school bus forecast as you get ready to head back to school today after what I hope was a great spring break for you last week. Mostly cloudy skies early this morning. The fog, 52 early. Your high today in the mid-70s. Mm. We're going to see some sunshine around the region by late morning and throughout the afternoon, so that's some good news on this Monday as well. Clint, back to you. All right, thanks, uh, Scott. As warmer temperatures approach, we can all expect more traffic on roadways, especially as people head to vacation spots. But we can also expect more pollution. CBS 19's Andrea Martinez joins us uh, here in the studio this morning. Andrea, Textile and is trying to increase at least awareness of air pollution. Yeah, they are, and they're making it really accessible and easy. They're doing it by way of an app, which seems to be the trend lately. Mm -hmm. And of course, um, they're adding tips to keep your car running efficiently, and it also helps you save money. Take a look at what I mean. Warmer weather. For some of us East Texans, it means taking a vacation. But for the atmosphere, it means more pollution. The culprit are vehicles. And now TxDOT is trying to change that with an app. This is an app that people can use when they're traveling. Um, it's time of year that the warmer weather's coming along. We've got spring break uh, that people are traveling. We want everybody to be safe, but we also uh, want them to drive efficiently and cleanly. The app gives you tips for reducing costs on your car. Like, uh, you know, you don't make real fast starts and stops. Uh, that'll help you uh, get better gas mileage and also reduce the emissions out of your tailpipe. During warmer temperatures, the ozone layers close to the ground mix with heat and car chemicals. We get into the summer, you know, we get into to the ozone awareness days. It helps to have cars running more efficiently and uh, properly. One East Texas service specialist says keeping up with your car's maintenance can not only be good for the air, but your wallet too. People will wait till their mileage is really high and then they'll come in and decide to maintain it. And then they're so far behind on their maintenance, their, their bill is high just in maintenance. Road Sense will remind you when you need an oil change, tire checkups, and will even give you tips about driving habits. According to Road Sense, aggressive driving like rapid starts and stops can pollute the air more and also lower gas mileage. So as you're gearing up to head to your spring break or summer destinations, remember to have some Road Sense. Road Sense also provides a map so drivers can find the nearest auto shops and gas stations and provides tips on what to do in case your car breaks down or if you get into a collision. Hmm. So what's the easiest way to access this Road Sense? Well, it's really easy. You can access it on roadsense.org and uh, you can download it onto your tablet, iPhone, computer, whatever you want. Yep. Pretty Make it easy for us, don't yes, they? Yes, they do. All right. Thanks, Andrea. Well, and for more information on that app and the Drive Clean Texas campaign, we have it at our website, cbs19.tv. Click on the hot button. A Dallas Republican lawmaker has proposed a bill that would make it a crime for private citizens to photograph or videotape police. If the bill is passed, it would be a misdemeanor for a citizen to photograph or record a Texas officer within 25 feet while they're working a scene. Many believe the measure would be un constitutional because much of what police officers do while on the job happens in plain view of the public. And of course, citizen journalists and news junkies aren't happy with the proposal either. They're trying to restrict people from covering news. This is the 21st century. Many believe that citizens recording without interfering with officers would be helpful, not harmful. The Dallas Police Association has come out in support of the bill. Majority Leader Mitch McConnell is warning that he will not hold a confirmation vote for Loretta Lynch as Attorney General. This is until the Senate completes work on a bill designed to curb human trafficking. Progress on the bill is stalled over a dispute about a provision regarding funding for abortions. McConnell says it has been federal policy for all Almost 40 years. Lynch would be the first black woman to serve as the nation's top law enforcement officer. Looking ahead, Republicans now in charge of Congress offer their budget blueprint this week. They're pledging to balance the nation's budget within a decade and rein in major programs like food stamps and Medicare. The chairman of the House and Senate Budget Panels plans to release their budget plans on Tuesday and Wednesday. Tyler Police will have a groundbreaking for a new sub a new police substation. It will be this afternoon at 1 o'clock. The ceremony will take place on the northwest side of Faulkner Park. That's just across from the baseball fields.
637 News for your family. Health leaders have linked Bluebell's listeria outbreak to a single machine at its Brenham production facility. Our Houston station reports the machine was shut down days, if not weeks, before the outbreak after a test by health leaders came back positive for listeria. The FDA issued an advisory last week after five cases of listeriosis was linked to Bluebell ice cream products from that production facility in Brenham. Bluebell said the outbreak is limited to products sent to the food service industry and that Bluebell products and grocery stores are not affected. Well, you may want to go ahead and start booking your hotel if you're planning a summer getaway. AAA looked at hotel bookings and found the hottest destinations, well, they're <laughs> literally hot. Florida has three of the top 10 most popular city destinations, including Orlando, which sits at number one, sunny beach destinations in California, and South Carolina also rank high on spots that are booking up quick this summer. For more stories that benefit your family, visit cbs19.tv, click on the News tab, and you'll see the News for Your Family section. While coming up in this morning's Health Alert, how to lower the cost of cancer drugs. Plus, is there a chance we may see the sun today? Scott tells us what to expect for our Monday. Right now, it's time to give away our ultimate CBS 19 and Choice Home Care Coffee Mug, and today's winner is Terry Metcalf of ARP. If you'd like your chance to win, just go to our Facebook page and sign up. We give one away every morning. All right, 642 now. It's time to answer our water cooler question for the day. How many gallons of water can a horse drink a day? Had lots of guesses, some pretty close. The answer is up to 10 gallons of water a day. Hey, just for uh, playing, one of the reasons we're doing some horse trivia this week, our winner gets four tickets to see the Gala of the Royal Horses coming up this Friday. And the winner today is Betty Morgan. Congratulations, Betty. We'll do it again tomorrow. Well, we've got some fog to deal with out there, and it's thick in a lot of places across East Texas. Let's get over to Scott Fossey with more. Scott? Yes, indeed it is, Clint. This is a perfect example of what the visibility looks like across parts of the viewing area. You're looking right now at the north side of Loop 281, looking off to the east. You can see the fog illuminated by, illuminated by the traffic lights here on the loop this morning. Visibility about a half of a mile there in some parts of East Texas, down to a quarter of a mile or less. So the National Weather Service has issued a dense fog advisory for most of our area. On top of the fog this morning, mid and high level clouds as well. Here's the good news. We are going to see some breaks in the cloud cover. Fog should burn off by late morning and this afternoon looks sunny around the region. I'm pausing for applause, not for me, but just for the fact that the sun's coming out. Finally today for at least an extended period of time. We saw a little bit around the area this weekend and we'll see more today. Before more rain moves in late tomorrow and on Wednesday. More on that in a moment. From Mount Vernon to Mineola to Tyler to Jacksonville to Lufkin and on east of there, including Shreveport Bossier, we're looking at a dense fog advisory in effect until 10 a.m. Let me walk you through the day. Mid 50s by 8 a.m., upper 60s by noon. Should see the sun by then. 75 is where we'll land today, then dip back down to around 73 with a fairly light southwest wind at 3 to 5, off and on throughout the day. It'll take a while for the fog to disperse due to those uh, calm winds this morning. We've got another storm system that we've been keeping our eyes on. It's circulating near the Baja Peninsula. It will do as we call open up and lift out in an east northeasterly direction now. Today, tonight, and tomorrow, clouds and moisture already streaming in from the Gulf and from the southern Pacific over the western part of the Lone Star State. And we'll just continue to see that moisture starting to inundate the lower levels of the atmosphere, especially overnight tonight and during the day tomorrow. By tomorrow, late afternoon and evening, another slight chance for rain. Temperatures have warmed significantly as far as overnight lows are concerned, feeling a bit more like springtime across the lower 48. As we take a look at our temperatures here across Texas this morning, it's 43 in San Angelo, 44 in Amarillo, mid 40s in Lubbock. Dallas is at 51, it's 48 in Waco. Check out Houston and Brownsville, both at 60 this morning. It's currently 52 off to the east of us in Shreveport, Bossier. Our temperatures right now, primarily in the upper 40s, low to mid 50s, 52 in Lufkin, next you're at 46. It's 51 in Henderson. Longview's at 53. 50 degrees in the Rose City of Tyler. 54 in Jacksonville. Emory there. Lake Tawakini vicinity. 50 degrees. So is Sulphur Springs and Mount Pleasant there in Titus County. 
Hour by hour today, here you go. Here's what you can anticipate. The early morning clouds give way by lunchtime today to partly to variably cloudy skies. We'll see additional cloud cover across deep east Texas today. Overnight tonight, partly cloudy, but clouds start to increase around daybreak tomorrow morning. As our next storm system, the one out over the Baja, starts to make its way into the western part of the Lone Star State about lunchtime tomorrow. It will continue to move in an easterly fashion, bringing us an increased likelihood overnight tomorrow night, definitely during the day on Wednesday for rain and could see an isolated strong thunderstorm or two as well. That's the middle part of the week. We clear out Thursday morning in the way of rain. Should get some sunshine in here briefly Thursday afternoon with a high of about 69. Then another West Coast system starts to move in on us on Friday. And I think by late morning around lunchtime on Friday, good chance for some heavier rains, especially across deep East Texas. But generally, I'll put the bullseye as far as the wet weather along and south of I-20 as far as some of the higher totals. The showers should push east of us early Saturday morning. We'll get decreasing clouds, a high of 64 on Saturday. Sunday looks good, 70. And we'll be looking at partly cloudy skies Monday and a high also of 70 degrees. That's your seven-day planner. You'll need your umbrella a time or two this upcoming week as we continue to <laughs> prepare, obviously, for spring, which yeah. is coming up officially on the 20th. At 78 tomorrow. Yeah, though, absolutely. So Pretty nice. Mid-upper like 70 is going to feel really nice compared to the cold weather we've seen and, you know, kind mm -hmm. of the dreary, almost London or Seattle-type, yeah. you know, rain that you typically associate with both of those cities. So enjoy today. Be careful on the roads this morning. Yeah, we got the London fog this yeah, morning. We sure, sure do. Pea soup thick. You bet. All right. All mm -hmm. right. Thanks a lot, Scott. A health alert now. Some top oncologists in the U.S. say it's time to do something about the high cost of cancer drugs. In recent years, prices for cancer treatments have jumped from about $10,000 to $100,000 a year. An article in a Mayo Clinic journal recommends lifting restrictions on imported drugs and having Medicare negotiate drug prices. Pediatricians can play an important role when it comes to young people and smoking. That's according to researchers in New England. They found early intervention can help kids quit or avoid the habit altogether. Nearly 4 million young Americans smoke, with about 80% of them continuing on into adulthood. A new study on people with high blood pressure suggests folic acid supplements can significantly reduce the risk of first stroke. Researchers in China tracked more than 20,000 adults with hypertension who took folic acid acid together with their hypertension medication. Nuclear talks with Iran resume today as an important deadline quickly approaches that story straight ahead. Also ahead, a man and a woman are on the loose this morning after robbing an East Texas gas station at gunpoint. And we'll have one last look at that Monday forecast. It's everything you need to know before you go. CBS 19 News, your weather authority for East Texas. 651 News before you go. Tyler Police still looking for two people they say are responsible for robbing a Valero gas station at gunpoint. It happened just after 11 o'clock on Saturday night at the Valero on the west-southwest loop. You can see in the surveillance video a black male and a white or Hispanic female came into the store as the clerk was preparing for clothes. The man held the clerk at gunpoint while the woman grabbed the cash. Just money and coins. We had a, we have change in a box of, you know, to have for the weekend, and it was about $200 in coins. Police say no one was hurt. Now, the female suspect was about 5 foot 4, 150 pounds. She was wearing a hooded black jacket with black pants and a black bandana. The male suspect was about 5'7 and weighed 140 pounds and was also wearing a black hooded jacket with black pants and a white bandana. Another follow-up, another man involved in the P.T. Cole Park murder case is set to enter a plea this morning. The Smith County District Attorney's Office confirms Raheem Goldstein will plead guilty to murder for his part in the 2013 shooting death of Brianna Young. Goldstein's guilty plea is in exchange for 20 years in prison. One man is on the run after allegedly shooting another man in Jacksonville. The Cherokee County Sheriff's Department says it happened just before 6 Saturday afternoon on County Road 3306 in Cherokee. County. Deputies are now looking for 44-year-old Jose Sandoval. They say he fled the scene with a woman and two teenage boys. He was last seen driving a red 1996 Dodge pickup truck with the license plate there on your screen, CXH4507. The victim was taken to a Tyler hospital for surgery, but was alert in speaking to a deputy while on the scene. 
New this morning, Los Angeles police are looking for a gunman who shot two police officers. A sergeant for the police department says the officers suffered minor injuries after someone opened fire Sunday night. The officers were reportedly in plain clothes at the time of the shooting and returned fire. Police set up barriers several blocks around the intersection to search for that gunman. A man police in Ferguson, Missouri say opened fire shooting two officers at a protest last Thursday is in custody. Police say Jeffrey Williams told them he was shooting at someone else. He's 20 years old. Williams says he had an argument with that person and did not intend to hit the officers. One officer was shot in the cheek and the other in the shoulder. Both were taken to the hospital but were released the same day. Williams is being held on a $300,000 bond. Robert Durst, the infamous murder suspect whose saga inspired the HBO series The Jinx, has been arrested in New Orleans. He was taken into custody at a New Orleans hotel over the weekend. This was for the murder of Susan Berman 15 years ago. She was killed as detectives were getting ready to question her in the 1982 disappearance of Durst's wife, Kathy. Durst has never been charged in connection with Berman's murder. He was acquitted in 2001 for the dismemberment death of his Galveston neighbor because he said the killing was in self-defense. He's being held without bond. Looking ahead, Secretary of State John Kerry meets with his Iranian counterpart in Switzerland today. It is the latest round of talks on Iran's nuclear program. It's their first meeting since 47 Republicans sent a controversial letter to Iran's leaders, warning them that a deal might not last beyond President Obama's term in office. World leaders have set an end a March, end of March deadline to agree on a framework for the final deal to be done sometime in June. Three days after Cyclone Pam swept through Vinayatu, the, the true horror of its destruction is only becoming clear now. Aid workers are starting to arrive and say it's the worst storm the country's seen in living memory. Authorities have declared a state of emergency after the monster cyclone tore through the island nation. At least eight people have been confirmed dead, but the actual count right now is almost impossible to predict. Almost the entire country is in a communications blackout. There is no phone or internet service. Gas prices are going back down. AAA says they fell for eight consecutive days and now average $2.43 a gallon. In Texas, it's about $2.23 a gallon. In East Texas, we've seen prices as low as $2.14. The price of crude oil plunged last week and AAA says that means prices at the gas pump could keep going down in the next few weeks. The oldest African-American church in Gregg County celebrates a major milestone. Members of St. Mark's Christian Methodist Episcopal Church celebrated 148 years of history Sunday. Several local leaders also joined in the service. One church member tells us she and her family have been proud members from the very beginning. I am the eighth generation within this church. My great, 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 great grandmother was the first janitor of this church. The church first began in 1867 by gathering in a brush arbor. The history doesn't stop just at the church doors. Four schools in the Longview area were named after the original members of this congregation. Well, as you get ready to get back to work or school this uh, Monday morning, got a little fog to deal with. Scott Fossey's over in the Weather Center. It's going to not last all day, but at least for this morning, Scott. Yeah, that's exactly right. A little bit of fog in some locales, a whole lot in others. Fog is uh, fairly dense over sections of Gregg County, the Rusk uh, County vicinity, also eastern sections of Smith County, southern Upshur County, parts of Wood County as well. You'll find it across all of East Texas. And visibility is on average between about a quarter and a half of a mile, although some of you a lot lower than that as far as visibilities. So keep your eye on the side of the road, obviously. Slow down this morning, low beam headlights. Some of the kiddos will be standing out alongside of the road waiting on the school bus this morning as spring breaks over for many of the school districts and they're back in session today. Dense fog advisory in effect from Mount Vernon south to about Mineola to Tyler to Jacksonville to Lufkin and east of there, encompassing a wide swath of East Texas and also the Shreveport.
Shreveport Bossier vicinity until 10 a.m. this morning. Once the fog starts to burn off, uh, it should turn out to be a really nice day. The mid and high level clouds over the top of the fog this morning will give way. We'll see patches of blue sky by 10 a.m. and this afternoon, partly cloudy skies area wide and warmer temperatures too. 72 by 2 o'clock, your high today I think will hit 75. Tomorrow, even a bit warmer across the region. Check this out, upper 70s across East Texas Tuesday. Notice the spotty showers move in overnight Tuesday night. Could see one or two in some of our western counties bordering DFW late in the day tomorrow. Tomorrow night and Wednesday, though, both days looking very, very wet as far as Tuesday night through about Wednesday night. We'll get a bit of a break early Thursday, then additional clouds move in Thursday evening. Slight chance for showers by Thursday evening, and we get another storm system in here on Friday. Looks like late morning on on Friday. Good chance, 60% chance for scattered showers and thunderstorms around the region. A little bit cooler Friday, 62 the afternoon high. Cold front will sweep the area late in the day Friday. Should help clear us out Saturday after some morning sprinkles. Otherwise, mid-60s for your high on Saturday. And Sunday and Monday, we're looking for highs near 70 degrees and overnight lows in the upper 40s. That's your seven-day planner. You can check it out on our website. You can find us at cbs19.tv. Once you get there, just click on the weather tab. The fog is thick mm -hmm. this morning, so do be careful, but at least no rain today. Yeah. We'll save that for later tomorrow <laughs> and tomorrow night. Yeah. Okay? All right. Thanks, yeah. Scott. Hey, here's a look at what's coming up on CBS This Morning. Coming up, CBS News investigates donations to the Clinton Foundation from foreigners, how they could affect a presidential run by Hillary Clinton. Plus, high-stakes nuclear talks begin with Iran. We report from Switzerland. More real news coming up on CBS This Morning, next. And that is all of our time this morning. Thanks so much for starting your day with us. Do be careful. The fog is thick out there this morning. Happy, have a great day. We'll be back in 25 minutes with an update. KYTX CBS 19 News app is brought to you by Hyundai of Longview. You pick it out, we'll work it out. We're KYTX. Texas is in our name. Monday, March 16, 2015. Welcome to CBS This Morning. An eccentric millionaire arrested for murder hours before a documentary airs an apparent confession. CBS News investigates the international donations to the Clinton Family's Foundation. And designers Dolce & Gabbana accused of being old-fashioned. Why their views on family have celebrities like Elton John demanding a boycott. But we begin this morning with a look at today's eye-opener. Your world in 90 seconds.